So I created the schematic of this Renogy kit. I'm gonna walk through the entire installation process. Now there's two different ways you can wire this kit up. You can wire it in series, which will increase the voltage to 24 volts, or you can use these connectors right here to install it in parallel mode, which will keep the voltage at 12 volts. Now I'm gonna go over which one is better and how to configure each version. So we'll walk through all the parts and pieces, how the installation needs to come together, but also keep in mind that the listing has a bunch of different um, assemblies of this kit. So some will have different controllers, some will include cables, some won't. So just make sure to pay attention to the drop down menus when you're configuring your checkout. So this specific kit I bought included the Adventurer 30 amp PWM uh, controller, charge controller and all of the cables and brackets. All right, so let's walk through the installation. The first thing we need to look at is the mounting brackets for the panels. So you're gonna receive four brackets in hardware for each panel that's included. So you get two panels with this kit. They're each the 100 watt RNG 100 DSS panels. So 200 watts total with this kit. This is what the brackets look like installed. So it's just a single bolt that bolts to the aluminum frame that's integral to the panel. And to mount the bracket to the solar panel, you take a bolt, put on a washer. That's gonna go through the underside of the frame. And then the bracket goes like this. You put another washer, then a locking washer, and then tighten it down with a nut. So that's the full assembly of one of the brackets. You'll notice there are numerous slots or holes for giving you a variety of different uh, mounting locations for the brackets. So you could either do two on each side, you could do two um, on the top and two on the bottom, however you wanna do it, whatever's gonna work for your um, installation. Here's what the bracket looks like uh, with the panel oriented upright. So the bracket will extend out from the frame a little bit. Now you might think that you could put this on the inside like this in order to save space, but uh, if you think about it, how the heck are you gonna get in there to uh, install that, the screws either to mount it to the, the roof or to bolt it to the frame? And it's just not enough space to get in there to do that. So uh, this is really the only option to get this uh, installed on the panel. You're gonna get a bag of screws for each set of brackets. So here's the other set right here for the other four. And you'll notice here a little plastic or silicone washer that'll seal the screw against the bracket, but you're gonna wanna use uh, some kind of sealant against the bracket in the roof in order to seal that hole that gets punctured. So these screws will go down just like that and seal against the bracket, but you wanna make sure you get underneath with some kind of sealant in order to make sure uh, no water gets through the hole in the roof. So once you've got your brackets planned out, the next is to figure out your wiring. So the panels come pre-wired. Each panel is gonna have a negative female lead and a positive male lead. So there's two different ways you can wire these solar panels. You can wire them in series where you connect the male from one to the female of the other. And then you take the remaining leads and connect them to the cables that are gonna run to your charge controller. So in a series configuration like this, you're doubling the voltage. So you're adding the voltage of one panel to the next. And this charge controller is actually rated to 50 volts. So that is sufficient for running these two panels in series. Now the disadvantage of running panels in series is that if one panel is shaded, it's gonna degrade the performance of the entire solar array. But one of the advantages is you can run longer runs of wire at higher voltage. The other option is to wire it in parallel using these Y connectors right here. So in this configuration, you're taking the male connectors from each panel, joining them together and sending one lead to the controller. And likewise, you're taking the female leads, connecting those together and sending those to the controller. So these are the splice connectors. They come in a pair. You can see that one is a female set and one is a male set. So you'll take the female connector from one panel and the female connector from the other panel now notice that these connectors have clips and there's a gasket. If you look at the male side, this red gasket right there, that's what gives it the weather seal. So you need to make sure this is pressed in all the way until it clips. Otherwise you're not gonna have a weatherproof connection. So then you'll do the same thing with the male leads. So this is called parallel wiring. And in this configuration, you're gonna have the same voltage as a single panel. So if it's a 12 volt panel, it's just gonna remain 
12 volts coming out of these leads right here. So then you would just connect these to the cables that are provided to go to the charge controller. And the cables that came with this kit are 30 feet long. So you have plenty of length to get to wherever you need to go. And here's the other one. Now this is a waterproof bulkhead fitting um, that enables you to run the wires to the interior of your RV or boat or whatever you're installing these on. You're gonna use a sealant adhesive along the perimeter here in order to seal it in place. And these fittings have a gasket on it that thread right into the bottom here to make a weather tight seal. And then these nuts unscrew and you can run these wires right through here. And when this nut gets tightened down, it creates a nice tight seal around the wire. So you get two of those for each lead that goes through. Then obviously on the other side here, you'll have holes drilled or one hole drilled uh, to run those wires through. So that's this right here. This would get installed kind of midline uh, between you know, the exterior stuff, the panel, and the interior stuff where your charge controller is. So those two wires connect directly to the charge controller right here. And again, this particular kit has the Adventurer solar charge controller. It has connections right on the back. This back plate comes right off and all of the connections are labeled. So this is your positive and negative from your solar panel, positive and negative going to your battery. There are a couple of optional sensors that you can uh, install right here, temperature sensor and battery remote. And then this connection right here is for the Bluetooth module, which will enable you to monitor um, your solar array right from your smartphone. So this would plug in right here like that. Now all of these connections here have uh, really nice terminal clamps. You just use a screwdriver to loosen this up put your wire right in there, and then you tighten it down. Now the wires do come pre-stripped, but most likely you're gonna cut this to the uh, length that you need and we'll just have to strip it yourself. And once you have the charge controller connected, you're gonna run the battery cables to your battery, which isn't included. Although some kits do include a power inverter, you just gotta, again, make sure you pay attention to the drop-down menus that you're selecting, but they do include these really nice battery uh, cables with the uh, terminals soldered and heat shrinked right on there. So this can connect directly to your batteries. All right, so hopefully that gives you an overview of the installation schematic and how this kit comes together. Again, just pay attention to the different uh, drop-down menus so you know exactly which parts and pieces you're getting.